Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today we're going to continue on with this 20 watt Class A amplifier, and we're trying to find the power supply. We're going to put this together in a kit in a box really soon here and get this thing done. So, last video we looked at some capacitors and we saw some improvement there. The video before what we found uh, using the lab power supply, the plus minus supply up here that we found that we need plus minus 28 volts on the rails to keep us from getting distortion okay and then also what we found was that 20 hertz was actually the worst case scenario you know where you would think that even though our power is at 60 hertz three times faster and then when you use a bridge rectifier and you get 120 hertz out of that it's like wow that's even better so now uh, I'm getting six pulses during a 20 hertz pulse, so 20 hertz shouldn't be my worst case because I'm getting, I can charge my cap six times during the time I'm putting that signal. Problem is, is it still turned out to be the worst case, right? It just works that way. So it's just time and uh, capacitors discharge in time. So I showed uh, 6.8 millifarad, did most of the goodness, adding a 10 millifarad in parallel was a marginal improvement. So that might give you the idea of having huge banks of capacitors, you know, may or may not be needed. But we'll show you some math in another video coming up. We're going to try to keep these videos short. And once we've kind of looked at all this stuff and, and really have some feelings and ideas about how things are going, then we'll look at the math and see what makes sense. Okay? Now, in the last video, we used this transformer. And with the capacitors, we were able to maintain right about just about 20 volts so it seems like we're there the other thing is the current even with the inefficiencies of this amplifier where it's set right now the bias uh, we were able to get about we're only using about half the capacity of the transformer so it really seems like man we could just we could just barely get the voltage and barely get the power out of this running two boards now the advantage of going to a bigger transfer, we got more voltage, we don't have to worry, more power, all that. Disadvantage is now we have more power to dissipate too, because we can't use it. Some amplifiers, they can swing higher, they might not be able to stay there, they'll burn up or whatever. This amp, it's it's like it has a governor on it. That input section will only allow us to get 20 watts. After that, it just clips. Doesn't matter if you got plus minus 60 volt rails, it's not gonna use it. So it's useless headroom. So there's only so much of that headroom that's useful. So, so because of the way this amplifier is and all that, this guy looks like still a viable candidate. So let's test this guy today, and then we'll test this one. Now this one should give us with 22 volt, you know, plus minus uh, with well, let me just say two output windings at 22 volts. Once we stack them, we can get plus minus 22 volts RMS. The peak of that is close to 31 volts, right around, you know, so we get 62 volts from rail to rail, okay, with the center tap. I mean, that's one way to look at it, because I'm going to use one bridge rectifier, right? All right, and this guy puts out uh, 25 volts RMS on each winding, which, you know, the square root of two of that is 35 volts per rail, so it's close to 70 volts uh, to, uh, from rail to rail, okay? Where this guy was 22 volts, 25, it sounded like there's only three volts, but it really comes out to about four volts difference per rail. And so if you end up with eight volts extra and you're putting out, say, two amps, that's another 16 watts of dissipation that maybe you can't use, but maybe we need it. So that's what this video is about. Let's come over here and test and see what, see what happens. <laughs> Let's do it. 10 volts. Okay, so now we're looking at across the transformer output. Let's see what that looks like. All right, guys, let's bring the voltage and see what we see. All right, there we go. Looking okay so far. Okay, the balloon's a little bit too tall. Let's bring that down. Yeah, there we go. Let's freeze that. All right. You know, I, I uh, changed the time base. Maybe I should capture, you know, let's capture some more waveforms. Let's do that again. Okay, 
Okay, that's good. Let's do that. All right. Now, there's our yellow peaking, our green charge. But now, let's just look at the blue voltage for a moment. Let's uh, turn off some of this stuff. Okay, we can leave the purple one on. Uh, let's turn off the yellow one too for a minute. Okay, now, see the purple line? That's uh, the transformer. Maybe some diode drops through the bridge rectifier, but that's the wave. But look at the transformer, how it's uh, flat topped. So the transformer itself is clipping. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, it's 47 point, uh, you know, it's almost 48 volts. So that's, you know, about 24 volts, right? But look at the top of the thing. Let me add the current back. So you see these big spikes of current? That current, 5 amp peaks, 1, 2, 3, you know, it's a little more than 5 right there, actually. That 5 amp peak has a voltage drop in the transformer that actually flatlines it. And then right here, same with this one. Now this current's not quite as tall, so you can kind of see how it's changing the... Uh... Yeah, so there you go. So we're not getting the peak waveform out of the transformer that we would have expected because of these high peak currents. See how the space between them when the rectifiers are turned off? But you know what, if I turn the voltage back on, you know, still, we're only seeing a little bit of a clip there because still, uh, these voltage waveforms here, they're, it's uh, 20 volts per 20, 40, 60 volts. Yeah, I mean, so if you look at this, we're getting 20, 40, just over 60 volts. And, and that's about right, because remember that calculation we did in the previous video, we came out with 31 volts uh, peak, and this is across both windings, so it's about 62. And we're getting about 31 here, maybe 31 on the bottom, maybe slightly less, but pretty close. So, and also the yellow waveform, we're only clipping right here at our top. So this transformer is giving us almost enough voltage with not going too crazy in capacitors and almost enough current. Well, just enough current and almost enough voltage. All right, let's try it one more time, okay? And this time I want to look at power. I want to use our Redfish uh, power clamp meter and let's measure the power. Let's bring that voltage up and then I'll freeze the Redfish. Okay, got it. Oops, I was going to bring it down, but let me freeze it so we have a picture. Okay, here's our redfish. Check out our redfish. Let me turn on the backlight, see if that helps. There we go. That, is that too bright? Wow, that's a pretty bright backlight, isn't it? If I add a little of my overhead light, it's pretty bright. Okay, uh, it says 64.5 watts. And that's put out 20 watts. So... Yeah, you can see how inefficient. Now I'm at 122 because I can control that over here at my Variac. And I got a point, well, I got 636 milliamps. Okay. So then if I, okay, let's go to the next window. And that's 77.6 BA. That's the one, the transfer is rated 160 BA, right? So that would mean we'd have about 80 VA per side. Look, we're just right there. Now, the power factor is 0.83. Not too bad. Uh, we have 43.2 VAR. That's uh, reactance power. All right, guys, we got a bigger transformer in there. Let's bring it up nice and easy and see what we see. Looks pretty good so far. Let's freeze that. All right, our voltage waveform, it looks like it's having a problem with the purple ripple again. Let's turn off some waveforms. 
and there's the green one let's get rid of the blue that's the transformer output let's just take a look at that so a little bit of curvature on the top and bottom but not flat like we saw before so that's better but we're not pulling the peak current either okay there we go well we actually have some pretty high peaks we got one two three four five six we have a couple high ones now we don't have the big capacitor so look how it's sagging the voltage again same thing but this time we start off higher so we're at 5 10 15 20 25 30 we're about 35 volts and we're but we're still dropping all the way down to here which is only about 15 volts so yeah we do need some capacitors of course to help us with that right all right so we're going to add some uh capacitors to see if we could smooth this out to keep these uh peaks from popping down every time you know during this uh so now look at that our voltage actually looks pretty good except for that little peak right there maybe a little bit of flat top there i can't yeah maybe a little bit but also that nasty peak caused by that uh this big green spike in current and that purple dip in the wave uh, voltage rail okay let's refresh the screen and try again with bigger caps okay i don't see any ripple in the purple rail yet that looks much better let's freeze that there we go now you know what I still see a little flat line on the yellow it could be that we're just hitting the top of the op amp but the voltage ripple looks uh, what 2.5 volts about the same as it did with the when we added those caps last time but this time we have 32 volts RMS all right here let's turn it back on again and okay we're bring it back up again and uh shoot i don't see that there we go yeah we have a little distortion oh it looks like the flat lines pit. okay there we go you know see how it's smoother on the top i think i think that flat line went away the uh Okay, so I brought up the uh, the rail voltage again, the transformer output, and see, even this transformer still has a little bit of flat line at these uh, peak input currents. It's just the uh, drop across the transformer windings uh, during those peak input currents. All right, let's look at one kilohertz, what it looks like. alright that's pretty cool looking let's capture a few waves okay and we'll freeze that alright so you can see uh, our yellow waveforms are output voltage that looks nice sinusoidal it looks like I might have ever bit just a little bit of clipping on the top and then our green waveforms are 120 Hertz coming in our sine waves charging but look at the uh, blue waveform, the transformer output. It's kind of uh, cropped off. Our voltage drill is sitting at 33.3 volts. That looks pretty good. But yeah, you can see the blue waveform is, is cut at 20 volts per, 20, 40, 60, about you know, 70 volts up. So about half of that's about 35. Take away a couple of diodes, we end up with about 33. Yeah. Okay, guys, so what do you think of that? Um, it was interesting, right? Now, the thing is, is um, these transformers, it really still looks like, even taking the VA into effect, which that's something we weren't really thinking about before. Well, I showed you the Redfish current probe, right? And the VA that's coming off of it. This guy looks like he's still doable. Now, this guy gave us more headroom. It's a... It's not a lot more power to dissipate and since this guy is so marginal this guy I'm kind of leaning towards this you guys probably are too now I know some of you probably say hey take two of those guys put one mono blocks right and you know what kind of 
Are you going to just use capacitors or is it going to be CRC, capacitor, resistor, capacitor? Uh, those I know a lot of people like that. What size resistor do you like that? Do you like to put half the capacitors, resistor, half the capacitors, or most of the capacitors? You know, so what arrangement, right? The value, there's a couple values of that resistor. One is half of your capacitance, it's providing uh, some impedance for the inrush, but the other caps are still giving them a huge inrush. And, you know, you still get that. So you're beating up part of your caps and the other caps get the benefit. But the other advantage is you got RC filter on the output, right? So as there's uh, current being pulled, it's so that you get ripple on one side of the RC, you know, of your filter. And then after the RC, you get a slower or, a, you know, there's an RC time constant there. So effectively, you're changing the 120 hertz ripple into something smoother and slower, essentially. But, uh, all right. Hey, we're getting close. I'm going to keep these videos kind of short so uh, we can kind of stay on point. Right now, It's we looked at transformers. We looked at caps last time. We looked previously. We looked to see what the worst case was. 20 kilohertz, 20 hertz. And then before that, we looked to see what voltage we actually needed out of this power supply to keep this guy from distorting, right? So now I'm going to start putting things together and I'll explain why I'm choosing a certain uh, route. But I'm not dead set yet, so give me your comments, suggestions, ideas, and we'll see what happens. Now, there was a suggestion uh, that to use, let's say we go with one of these transformers, to use a bridge rectifier for each tran or amplifier and its own set of capacitors off that bridge. So there's some separation to the transformer. I like that idea. So what do you guys think? Um, I should give a meter away for some kind of, you know, you know, we're going to do something like that. I'll come up tonight. Somebody gave me an idea of that, and I'm trying to think it out right now. So, yeah, we'll figure out a, a meter. Uh, I'll come up with something for the next video, like a competition kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll give away a meter, okay? I got an idea. Uh, show me the math or leave a comment and, and come up with your mathematical, let's use some math, not, let's just say use, or if you have a roll of thumb, put that out there. Uh, and you know what, I guess it's up to me to select who I think gets closest to the answer I'm looking for. So it's kind of like that teacher that's a jerk that you never know what to give them. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. But, I mean, that's one thing I could do, because I do have, you know, I have a, a meter around here I could give away. So, what do you think? All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for my patrons. Uh, hey, they helped me get that meter. So, uh, you know, and you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I've got some more meters I'm going to give away on some other videos. And so I've got some reviews. But thanks for watching. Better get out of here. See you next time. Now, and that was with the 160 VA. So now we're going to get the 250 VA in, and let's see what difference. I took out the bulk passers, the extra bulks. So let's see what we get. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Look. All right, uh, something on the board did not like that. If you guys could see the smoke coming up, I think, well, that's too bad. I smell burnt electronics. I think the voltage was too high.